All right, the last thing we're going to talk about in this module is something called depth sorting. So this is how do you figure out what's what objects in front. And with the ray tracer, this was not too hard to do because we just, you know, we could cast a ray. And if there were a few things that this ray might hit, so if I sent out this ray, for example, it's going to hit all three of these objects. But I just check to see which one has the smallest ray parameter. So this star would have the smallest T. So it's pretty trivial to deal with with the ray tracer. But it's a little bit harder to deal with um, in an object first render. So there's a couple things you can do. So, so you're, you're, you know, you're figuring out these objects project onto the screen by different projection schemes. So for example, you know, we looked at um, the perspective projection. Um, and we saw that this, you know, eventually we're going to end up with this in this viewing volume here. So how do I figure out what's in front of something else? Okay. So one thing you can do is something called the painter's algorithm. So paint the objects that, sh so you would paint this mountain first and then you would paint this mountain. So paint the object first that's the furthest back. Then paint the second furthest object back. And then the third one and so on. So you're, al you're only painting things that are, are in front and you're going in this hierarchy. So you just have to be able to sort your objects from front to back. And this is the way that layering works in programs like Photoshop or GIMP. So you have a layer back there and then you'll put something on top of it and then you'll put something on top of that. So this just requires you to sort the layers and figure out which layer gets drawn first. So this is one way you can do it. Um, all right, cool. So pop quiz, which one of these should be drawn first? Okay, pause and take a moment. Okay, guess what? It's impossible. <laughs> As it says, overlapping polygons can cause the algorithm to fail. So, so this is a case where you cannot come up with a consistent ordering um, from, from back to front. If I say I draw the blue one first, I can do that. Um, but then if I go to draw the red one after, then I want the blue to be over the red here, but, but that can't be if I'm painting the red after, right? Okay, so th there's just no one that you can choose to come up with a consistent order. Um, but there's another way you can do it with a shader in practice. So here's finally where I'm going to use this Z coordinate in this viewing volume here. So that's why I went through so much trouble to figure out, well, what is the z-coordinate? Let, let me make sure that, that everything in the view for us to maps to between negative 1 and z and positive 1 and z. So if I'm assured that, what I can do is, is if two things are going to go to the same pixel, then I'm going to keep the one with the smaller z. Okay, so the one that's closer to the near so closer to the to the front. So, you know, there may be multiple objects that project onto the same pixel, but whichever one has the smallest Z at that pixel is going to win. So let me show you, I made a shader. Um, oops, wrong page. I made a shader in GG Slack that allows you to look, so I'll show you here, if I select depth. This is coloring things by how close they are to the near plane in my perspective viewing here. So by the way, the near plane is 0.01. Look, if, if I make the near plane further, if I make the near plane two, for example, um, you'll see, I should just make it four. Um, there are certain things that I can't see anymore. If I go back to my shader here. Um, there are certain things, let's see, when I get close enough here, see suddenly the cylinder disappears because it's, it's too close. I can't see it. Let's actually make it even more extreme. Let's make it 10. Okay, see this? It's cutting off everything in front of the near there. Okay, so that's, that's a little crazy. So usually we keep the near distance a lot smaller than that. Okay. Anyway, so if I go back to the depth shader, 
I see the bright stuff is closer to the near plane and the dark stuff is further. So this pixel, for example, has both the cylinder and the cone behind it projecting onto it, but, but I can see that the cone behind it is going to have a Z um, that is greater or further away than the one here, than the cylinder, okay. So that's what you do, you go pixel by pixel and any object that projects on there, you just check its Z coordinate, or it's also called its depth coordinate, after the projection. So, so whatever you end up with after multiplying by this matrix, it's gonna be similar to negative one and one, just check it to see if it's smaller than the smallest one you've drawn so far at this pixel. And if it is, then overwrite that pixel with that object. Okay, so that's how that works. Now this, this is pretty good for, for an object first render. This, this works pretty well in practice, um, but there is one problem. So if we go back to the shader here, we kind of saw it a moment ago actually. If I go underneath this, you see this weird thing that's happening? <laughs> this it's like almost, it's like, you know, if you have epilepsy, be careful because this is like flashing like crazy. So this is something called Z fighting. So what's happening is the bottom of this box and the bottom of this plane here have the same depth with respect to my camera. They're actually showing up at the exact same place. So it's actually random which one ends up having a smaller Z. It's up to, to numerical precision. So as I move around, it changes which one has a smaller Z. So you have to be careful and you, know, if you should not place things directly on top of each other. You see it happening here with the cylinder as well. There's some Z fighting with the, with the cylinder and the plane. The cylinder's base is exactly on the plane. So I don't, whether the cylinder is in front or whether the plane is front is in front is, is sort of left up um, to be determined at runtime based on numerical precision, whichever one wins the fight. Um, I put these exactly on top so I could illustrate this, but you would want to move probably the box up just a little bit there. Um, this actually gets worse if you make your far distance further. That means you have less numerical precision to sort out depth. Actually, we don't really see it. It's not too much worse here. Well, you can see the cylinder got worse. Not that it was good before, but you can see it's even more unstable. So, Anyway, that's how that works. Just last thing I'll show you is, look, if I make the far distance too small, I can't really see too far in front of me. I have to get much closer to, oh wow, oh, this got totally messed up because I made it zero, hang on. Let me make it like 10. Okay, there we go. So if I get too, too far away from things, they disappear. Okay, but I do have higher numerical precision here, although yeah, it's still messed up, whatever. Okay, so that's Z fighting. As you can tell, it's getting pretty late for me, so like, <laughs> I'm having a hard time <laughs> speaking. But, but this is all I wanted you to see. Um, these are the prerequisites that you'll need for the Tune Shader, which we'll talk about on Wednesday. All right, see you then.